And for the third night in a row, we got the music, folks. Because the New York Knicks brought that second half intensity that got them the win in Sacktown into Dallas against arguably one of the NBA's hottest teams right now. But as I said, man, number 30, Julius Randle with a uh, 13 point fourth quarter would take his boys home, man. Knicks win big. 107 77. Starting to get a little heated in the tank right now. Might have to pop the top off. The tank is starting to get hot. It's gaining ground on the Hawks, who just lost to the Bucks tonight. Three games back of the play-in spot, number 10. Let me know how you're feeling about this Knicks 30-point win. As I said, man, Mavs, one of the hottest teams in the league. Winners of five straight. Luka playing at MVP levels. Knicks holding the 77 points. And, uh, look, it was a team effort, man. I, I don't think you could look at one guy on this team from top to bottom who didn't contribute in a positive way to this win. But uh, I thought, you know, the adjustment that Julius made in the second half, man, he just started attacking more. He was just in a beast mode, attack mode. He had Finney Smith on him who was way smaller than him, and you were looking for him to abuse this guy. I think once uh, two things happened, you had McBride go start guarding him in the second half, and I thought McBride's defense all game was was ferocious. And then Mitch's block on the Doncic's three-pointer kind of cooled him off. And then, like I said, fourth quarter uh, was, was a lot of Julius who, who took us home, man. I'm confused, CP. What is going on? <laughs> we are back again conflicted, ladies and gentlemen. I am Only the officially Knicks. confused. Only the Knicks. Uh, wow. You know, this, they're, they're beginning to create a new storyline now to end the season. Um, I believe they're now only three and a half back of, of the ninth seed, only four games back in the loss column of the Atlanta Hawks, yeah. uh, and three back in the loss column of the Charlotte Hornets. So, if the season ended today, they would have the 10th spot in the lottery. Uh, but they're only three and a half back of the playoffs. So, you know, this is getting interesting now. And, you know, you talked about the Dallas Mavericks. We, we, you know, we even go back. I mentioned even the Phoenix game. This could have been four games in a row. It's got to have been four. <laughs> Easy. And Reddish would have stayed in that game. Easy. So this, you know, on top of them being, uh, you know, on a hot streak now, they have been very good the last 20 games at home and man you know the defense you know it starts there and yeah. the reason I say I'm confused is because you know I've been clamoring for a change in the rotation for more emphasis on the young guys to mix it up more and you're starting to see some of the impact that the young kids are not only having you know, on the game, but on the rest of their teammates. Facts. And it's all kind of clicking now because they are playing better in the area that the team took a huge step back this year. Defense. Defense. The kids have played well. Um, and, and, and you know, now they have given the team a big jolt. And, you know, Mitchell Robinson, you know, five, you know, Mitchell Robinson is a beast on the offensive glass. And, hey, if he's not going to play well against Jokic or Embiid, then so be it. Because they're only two guys and you don't play them 82 games. Right. right? So, like, if, if Mitch is going to play this way against everyone else, I'll take that. Um, and so I thought Mitch played played well. Three blocks, double-double, two steals. Um, and, of course, Julius. You know, this is his hometown. Um it, you know, at the end of the game, he was turning to the crowd and he was telling the crowd, this is my gym. Mm. And I'm sure he was in that was in reference to, you know, this is this is where I'm from. This yeah. is my gym. Uh, so his confidence um, is growing. And again, I think the storyline is going to be the defense to end the season. CP, these young guys, because even even possessions where, you know, a Randall or Fournier, they're not playing great. The, the young guys are covering up a lot of mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Deuce and IQ is a really fun backcourt That's to watch. 
That's their fact. effort on offense, their effort on defense. Beautiful. Absolutely loved it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deuce closing out the first half beautifully. Double team on Luka, and Luka gets a pass off. Uh, Deuce runs to go close out. Notices another swing pass down to uh, uh, Smith, mm-hmm. uh, Dorian Finney-Smith. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Dorian Finney-Smith is walking away from the basket. Deuce gets into the passing lane. Finney-Smith puts up a bad shot. Smart defense right there, just mm-hmm. from just from McBride. Uh, I think uh, JD said it last game about IQ being mentally comfortable with Deuce on the floor. I think is great. I think I think that's that's really good because you see you see him. I think he's averaging like five assists in the past three games. IQ's three looking games confident out there, bro. Yeah, that can't, yes. that can't be denied. That he's looking he's looking good, man. He's looking good. Right, and then uh, JD just talked about rotation, defensive rotations uh, when we started tonight's show, mm-hmm. and it just Deuce does this. Deuce is helping people out mentally, which is great. I love it. the the way that this season was supposed to go. Um, we were supposed to go towards a youth movement, and the front office bought into wins. Yeah, no question. Yeah, no question. Uh, and, I'm I'm gonna be honest. I was part of it. I was all bing bong and stuff, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I definitely like. I definitely think we should play the rest of the season with the young guys. See how it goes and just feel it out. Shout out to the ones that don't believe in the tank. Shout out to the ones that want to have the tank. But me personally, y'all already know where I stand. I set my tone about that last week mm-hmm. about how I feel about getting up and waking up in the morning and looking in the mirror, telling myself I'm a loser. Telling myself I can't win. Telling myself I can't go out there and provide. So I believe the squad heard that. So shout out to the squad because they told you to lay down. They told you not to work on your game. They told you to go to that game and, you know what I'm saying, take a pay cut. You know what I'm saying? To throw the game, not to try to win. That's what people been telling everybody. But wrong bet. There's a lion heart thing going on. You know what I'm saying? And the team feel like they got something they want to prove. And y'all want to play the young kids, but y'all, y'all want to play the young kids just so you can get a draft pick. Wrong way to play the young kids. The young kids want to be in that game because they got something they want to prove. They want to mm-hmm. take spots. They want to be on that court. They want to let people know I belong here. So that's what's happening with the squad right now. Stop thinking about that tank mode and start appreciating what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? If you want to stay in your tank mode, turn your TV off. Stop buying the ju- jerseys. Stop, you know what I'm saying, promoting the negativity. If you want to tank, y'all, what type of player you want? You can mm-hmm. tank all day and all you want. What, a few years ago, we had one of the worst records and still ended up with a third pick. So that's going your tank. Them people are going to play and put whoever they want in that draft pick. Back in the days, you used to see them put their hand in that popcorn machine and pull out what number you was and put it on the board. Nowadays, they don't do that. They just go ahead to the draft card, go to the commercial, come back to play and have everybody where they want them to be. They don't want them people to go wherever they want them to be. So all that tank you want to do, that don't mean that we're going to get a, gonna get a top player. It don't mean that we're going to get somebody that y'all rooting for and, and um, wanting inside the draft pick. It don't mean none of that. It's a lot of players that don't even go inside the top seven, top eight, top nine, top ten, and they mm-hmm. come out to be good players, better than ones that have been top one, top two, top three. So what do y'all keep talking about this tank thing for, you know what I'm saying? Just appreciate sometime when we get a W, you know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. a three-piece, you know what I'm saying? Some of y'all don't wear three-piece suits, let you, you know what I'm saying? You're probably going to a funeral. I wear three-piece suit anytime I feel like, because that's what type of person I am. I feel good about myself when the God wake me up and unattach mm-hmm. my eyelids and give me life to live today, you know what I'm saying? So there goes some more ammunition for your tank mode. Stop talking about the tank mode. Appreciate what's going on. Appreciate them guys out there on that court doing hard uh, hard work. Appreciate them guys going on this West Coast trip, winning some games, giving you some type of feel good, you know what I'm saying? You spend your money, you pay your money, you don't lead passes, you go to the game, you go to the game to lose. Come on now. You watch, mm-hmm. you pay for your lead pass, hope you take to lose. Come on, stop that now. Y'all-